Hello, everybody. Are we ready to do some painting? I hope so. There, no. Okay. So tonight we're going to do, or I'm going to paint, and y'all are going to watch, a apple with a worm on it and a ladybug. So, a couple things. Just want to make sure that you guys know. This is my ladybug, okay? And so here's the deal. What I do when I'm going to do something with red, I use red as a base coat. <clears throat> so y'all know that the MVO looks like this, kind of a brown color. So the best way to make sure you do your ladybug quick and easy, because this is a pretty simple pattern, is to lay your red uh, base coat. That's what you want. And so that's what I did. I did a red base coat on my edges. You can see my edges. I'm trying to make sure everybody sees edges. And I just did a, a red base coat on my ladybug. Those black dots, that's just telling me where I'm going to put black paint after a while. So um, I've always, well, I think I've always said, I want to make sure I say it again. So when you know that you're going to have red on something, I would more than likely, depending on the scenario, but most likely, I would start with a red base coat. You don't want to start with white and then put white on top of red. You're not going to like that. Hey, Kim. Hey, Connie. So glad you ladies are here. Uh, so, Ladybug, we're going to do that in just a minute. And we have our apple with the worm. We have this one as a door hanger too. So same scenario, you know that the MDO looks like this, that kind of brown color. I just went ahead and base coated it in red. My sides are base coated in red and this is very base coated in red. And I'm gonna lay the green and the white and the black and all that on top of there. So that's the plan. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do my little, um, I think I'm gonna do the little worm first. And what I'm using is lime green. I think it's number 10. Whatever, whatever lime green is, that's what this one is, okay? So that's what I'm doing on my, um, my little worm. He's gonna be green. And I like lime green just because it gives a, it's a very, very bright green. Gives it a lot of color. I hope you guys are having a good day. I think I told y'all, my air conditioner's out at my house, so. I have a, a window unit going in the background. I don't know if y'all can hear it, but I don't really like the window unit, but thank goodness I have it, because it would be worse if I didn't. A lot worse, y'all. It's hot outside. So if you notice, make sure y'all can see this. I'm getting this lime green up here on my little guy, right? And that's a small area. So I'm using a mop brush. I'll show you a little trick. Because I know the more tricks you have up your sleeve, the easier life is. Okay, so I'm using this lime green and I'm just using a um, script liner. And what I'm gonna do, because this area is small in here, I'm gonna use this script liner around the eyeballs of my little uh, green worm. And why am I doing that? I'm doing that because my mop brush is too big. Because basically, you always wanna think about the size of your project as uh, very important when you're determining the size of brush. Obviously, the bigger project you have, the bigger brush you're gonna use. The smaller project's gonna require a smaller brush. So in this little area around his eyes, I'm just doing a little bit of what I call script linering, just basically putting some paint in there. Because I know that this mop brush is gonna be too big for that. So I'm gonna put this in the water right quick and keep on going. So that way, I've got that lime green kind of right where I want it around the, the guy's little face. So put a little bit more lime green here. So the guy is coming to fix my air conditioner on Thursday. So I'm super excited about that because, y'all, I have to tell you, when you don't have central air and you're used to having that, my house smells differently, if you can believe that. It really does smell differently. It's kind of strange. So there's my little green guy. And then I'm gonna put some green paint for my leaf. Again, I, I did the whole base coat, everything in red. You always wanna try, if you can, in base coat, whatever the majority of your color is gonna be for that project. So in my case, an apple is red, right? So I use that as my base coat simply because that's the easy way to do it if that is uh, the, prompt, the most color you're gonna have 
on your project. In my case, it's red, so that's why I base coated it in red. But you can base coat in any color you want. It just makes more sense to base coat in the color that's the primary color. Okay, so I've got my leaf, and now I'm gonna use reindeer brown. Hey, Lauren, I hope you're doing good. I don't know how you are supposed to teach kindergartners uh, through distant learning. I bet that's very interesting. <laughs> so I'm gonna do the stock of my um, apple in reindeer brown. I think it's 32 or something like that. You would think by now I'd have that memorized but it's reindeer brown. And I, we've heard a lot from you guys that the, the little stickers that we've started putting on the back seems to be helping, so that's a good thing. So I've got my reindeer brown. What am I doing right now? I'm just kind of loading my brush. Why am I loading my brush? The more I have on my brush, the easier it's gonna be to put paint wherever I want it, okay? So I'm gonna bring that paint over here and what I do too, is just something I always do. You don't necessarily have to. I just do it because I like the way it looks. Whatever I base coat in, I go ahead and paint that color on the edge as well. So I'm kind of, in this case, I've got the edge right here has been painted twice. It was painted red, and now it's being painted reindeer brown. And I did green base coat on the edges over here too. Green color. All right, so I've almost got this guy base coated the way I want him, except I've got a little bit of area down here, and because it's so small, I'm going to bring up that script liner. So let me get my script liner, and what am I going to do? I'm going to make that little area black and white. Okay, so let's see. Let's put some black on there. Here's some black. I think that's number 37. And I'm just gonna uh, use my little script liner. Actually, this is a bigger script liner. And I'm just using this to lay down a little bit of a base coat right here. Because my area is little, I'm gonna use the script liner. And I'm gonna use a script liner to make this black. I guess this way. Uh, let's see, can't remember. No, I think I got it wrong. Hold on, y'all. So when you get something wrong on paint, what do you do? Wipe it off with your fingers. That's what I do. All right, let's do this. Let's put some white. I think this is how this goes, y'all. I'm gonna put some white around here. Got a question for you guys while I'm thinking about it. I've been meaning to ask y'all and I keep forgetting. Do you, uh, two questions for those of you that are watching. Uh, is it easier if I give you a heads up that I'm going to do a live? If that's helpful, let me know. Uh, like today, I think I posted earlier, I'm going to do live between 7 and 8. And I tend to think doing lives in the evening is better. So people, I don't know if that's better or not. I was thinking about doing it in the afternoon. So if y'all could just kind of comment and let me know what schedule works for you. Of course, I'm going to try to work around the schedule for most folks. If afternoon, say two o'clock or better, let me know that. If evenings are better because you know, you're busy during the day, let me know that, okay? All right, now I'm gonna put some black in here. And this is just my base coat, so it's certainly not perfect. And it's not gonna be all pretty, pretty, pretty till I get it where I want it, okay? Okay, so I've got that. You had trouble finding it too, Con? Seven's good? Okay. Yeah, sometimes I have trouble when Ashley goes live. I can't find it either. And I, I don't know if there's anybody out there who can tell me why. I've asked several people that I know have a lot more knowledge about Facebook than I do. Uh, everybody has looked for me and I have looked for myself. All my notifications are turned on in my settings, so why I can't find when Ashley goes live, I don't know, but it's so frustrating. I, I don't know if that's just Facebook being Facebook and everybody has that problem, or if it's just me, but it's certainly a problem that I have. So, I, I mean, we can't figure that out. I've had several ladies remote into my computer and look at all my settings, they all tell me my settings are fine. Who knows? Uh, okay. 
Yeah, you can always rewatch it. That's true, Phaedra. All right, so here's what I got going on right now. So I'm gonna put this over here in front of my magical dryer, which is nothing other than a ceiling fan. So you're gonna have to hold on just a second, but I want this to dry some. And then I wanna do some shading for you guys. So hold on just a second, let me put it under the fan. Here's the ladybug I'm gonna work on. All right. So my ladybug, she's so super, super cute. But she, there's not really much to it in terms of coloring. I think that's part of what makes her so cute. So in this case, what I would do, I'm gonna do black dots, right? But this part in here is red and I wanna do some shading. So before I do my black dots, which is technically base coating the black dots, I'm gonna do some shading before I base coat. Usually we base coat and then shade. But in this situation, it's gonna kind of be uh, reversed. And I'll show you why. So I'm gonna find a shader, which I think we've told, Ashley's told you before and I've told you, this is typically, a, this is a flat, what they call a flat wash brush. You can use it for base coating. I may, Ashley and I may be some of the only people in the world who use it for shading, but that's just what I've always done. So uh, you can use it for base coating, you can use it for shading. Of course, we, we like the mops, so that's really what I use for base coating. But a lot of people who do like maybe fine detail would use this for base coating because they're doing something really small. But me, I'm doing a lot of stuff. So, you know, we always use this for our base coater. But this is a flat wash brush. I use it as a shader and so does Ashley. Right now I've got that, I think it's 23 shading red. And so I painted my red as my base coat on my sides and on the front, let it dry. And I'm gonna do my shading next. So just like we always show you, kind of get the tip of the brush like that. And I'm going like this. I'm just kind of putting that shading right where I want it. Now, sometimes shading is going to look, um, oh, what is the word? Maybe a little uneven. Maybe you've got a lot of color on one end and not so much on the other. That's normal, I think. You just kind of come back and, and fill it in some more. Add some more paint. I think I've said this before, sometimes if my shading isn't really where I want it, I just let it dry and I come back and do it some more on top of it. So I'm gonna put my shading. So I have my shading there and I'm gonna do some shading here. Why am I doing shading first on this guy? Because the area in between the black dots is pretty small. I don't wanna have to try to shade after the black paint is there. Because as you can see, the way and I'm doing it right now, if I'm trying to shade around the black uh, dots, that's just more of a, a hassle. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna shade right over those black dots. And then of course I'm gonna come back and put black paint on top of all of that. So you're only gonna see the shading on the part that I want you to see, okay? So there we go. And that's really all the shading that the ladybug has. So I'm using number 23 red, shading red. That's what I've done. Now I'm ready to go back with a mop brush because this guy has, a, this ladybug has a lot of black paint. Hey Ash, how are you doing, baby? She came over today, Ashley did, but y'all, I really, we've been so busy, I didn't have a chance to talk to her. So, um, but I uh, am using number, the black, and I'm kind of, um, uh, what is the word? Generous, I think, with it. I tend to put a lot of paint on everything I do. It gives me good coverage. It gives me the color I want. And also paint is always gonna protect your, your piece. So I'm just putting black on there and using this mop brush, right? I think we're out of mop brushes at the shop. The supply chain with the whole Corona thing has not been fun. But you know, hey, if all I have to worry about is a, is a, uh, a brush, I think I'm doing pretty good. Now, I did some red shading over here and it's still wet and it, I covered that. So what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna pull that off with my finger a little bit. Wipe that off, because I really don't want the shading there. So, I'm gonna put black dots on my ladybug. I don't know what it is about a ladybug, y'all, but everybody likes ladybugs. There we go. Putting lots of paint on my ladybug. Got my black dots, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, she's saying, um, Kimberly's saying it'll give you a pronounced look. Exactly. You want it to have that good contrast from your red. Because the whole point, I think a lot of what we do is color and having a lot of color. And that's what shows up and that's what attracts the eye to the piece, you know. So I like to put a lot of color on there. All right. Yes, 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 yes. Starting to look like a ladybug, y'all. Starting to look like a ladybug. Okay. And really, there's not going to be a whole lot to her. I'm going to put this black on here, let it dry some, and do a little bit of highlighting, and she's done. So make sure you start with your black, your red base coat on your ladybug, because we had a lot of people order ladybugs. Coming down. And uh, when I'm doing some base coating like this, I tend to make long strokes. Strokes that are long like that tend to be more even. Um, I see sometimes people doing this. If you're painting and you're just, you're just doing this over and over and over and over, you're really not doing yourself any favors. You're really doing more harm than good. If you'll get a generous amount of paint on there and load that paint up on the brush and make longer strokes, you'll have a lot less brush strokes in there. Okay, now, I told you I like to do the sides, whatever that base coat color is. So I did these sides in red, but since I'm base coating all of this part in black, I'm gonna paint the sides black. You don't have to do that. It's not like a law or anything. I just do it because of personal preference. It's just a look that I like, but if you wanted to leave them red, no big deal. I'm base coating those. And I'm putting a lot of black on here. But as you can see, I probably have only been working on this maybe five, six, seven minutes, and there's not much left to do. Super cute, super simple, and sometimes uh, less is really better. But I am putting quite a bit of black paint on here. All right. Got that the way I want. I'm gonna put the brush in there in the, in the water. Uh, something I'm, I missed Ashley's live last night because um, I, I was just very lucky like that. I had a conference call, and um, so, but a couple of them, she had some really cute stuff there last night that had some stars. I think one was a sunflower bucket, and the other one was a, th a three sunflower bucket, and the stars were right across the top of the bucket. And a couple of guys were asking, a couple of ladies were asking, can we get them without the stars? Well, no, we really can't do that because we've already made them. But what I did, I reached out to the both of them too, is if you find something on here you really don't like, <clears throat> uh, I don't know, you know, there's something that's etched on here you're not too crazy about, you can always get some wood putty and fill in that line and kind of take a smooth thing over it like that, a uh, flat knife, and then sand it down, and then the line is gone. So, uh, but I'll do, I'll do that in a video one day for y'all. Uh, if you find yourself, oh, I like everything on here, but just a few lines, you can make those disappear with some wood putty and a little bit of work. It is, it's a little bit of work and you gotta let the wood putty dry and you gotta sand it down a little bit. But you know, in the overall scheme of things, it's not that hard. So I'm gonna put this under my magical dryer. I'll be right back and we're gonna work on the apple. So it's been under the dryer over there. The, uh, it's actually nothing but a ceiling fan. And it's still a little wet right there, so I'm gonna turn this fan on too. I'm gonna do some shading on this big apple, okay? So I want a shader that's probably, it's a fairly big size of apple. I'm gonna go something a little bit bigger. I'm gonna do this brush. Although, hold on a minute, y'all, this brush is not going to work because it's way too stiff. But I think the thing about a shader that I like is this, if you have one, the, the bristles are a little softer. So, like, if you're in a, you know, you're in a store shopping for bristle or for brushes, maybe you're in Walmart or wherever, you just happen to go down a brush aisle and you see something that looks like this. This is what I do. If I put this over here and those brush 
bristles are stiff, I don't use it. Because stiff bristles are, are that, that might be good for stenciling or dry brushing, but when you're trying to shade, you're gonna not be very, very happy. So if I see a brush that's pretty soft up here and those uh, bristles are pretty soft and easy to move back and forth, I might consider buying it, you know, depending on the price and depending on how much I wanted it or whatever. Okay, so again, I'm just taking some shading and I'm gonna go all up and down this guy. Now, I had somebody say, you know, uh, can you talk to us a little more about shading? Because I'm struggling with that. And I certainly understand that. So here's the deal. I, what I would do, if you're struggling with shading, let's pretend for a moment. This has got a black goop of paint. It's not supposed to be on there. I would get just a piece of paper, cardboard box. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Whatever uh, you got. And here's what I think would help you in shading more than anything. I think... When you're shading, I see sometimes people will do this. They'll go, they'll do one or two things. They'll go real slow like this and just, you know, like they're just, just really uptight about it. Or they'll do this, you know, they'll kind of pick it up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. I always think the best way to shade is go here and move. Move your brush and, and uh, even, and even uh, strokes. So. You don't want to just sit here and do like this because then it's going to show every little bump that you're making. Take a piece of paper and just do this. You see, I'm running out of paint, right? So I'm going to come here and I'm going to go back. Back. Like that. If you'll practice like that, and the idea is this. This isn't a pencil or a pen. You're not going to shade by doing this. Let me turn it over this way. You know, like when you're writing with a pencil, you're sitting here and you're doing this, okay? It's going to be hard for you to do a lot of shading by doing this. Shading, to me, especially like on this apple, you want to move the whole shoulder, I mean the whole arm. See, I'm moving everything here, aren't I? Yeah. So it's about just making that stroke. That's what it's about, just kind of going back and forth and just shading till you get it the way you want it. Practice, practice, practice. But that's just a couple of little things. So watch what I do here. Notice when I'm shading on this apple, I am, stay, I am trying to do long strokes. I'm not trying to go short. I'm not trying to, you know, pick it up a lot. I'm trying to do as long as I can. And if I mess it up, I don't worry about that because I know I can come back over it. If I don't have enough paint, shade it again. And in this case, this is what I would do. Okay, I'm gonna come up like this. And I might even come up like this. And I would do something like this, here, there we go. I would probably lay that along. Now, one thing I like about an apple, we got we have this as a, as a uh, door hanger. You could always do this for a teacher as a door hanger you know, Miss Thompson or Miss Amick or whatever. Um, so I would probably leave this right here a little bit vacant because I probably honestly would do some sort of lettering, hello, whatever, something like that. Welcome, whatever it is you wanna put on there. All right, so I'm gonna wash out my brush. I've got my red kind of the way I want it. I, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna do some shading on this, uh, stock even though it's a little bit wet a little bit wetter than what i would like i'm going to use the shading brown which i can't remember what number that is y'all this is shading brown and i think i told this customer today at the uh store she happened to catch me up there and she was buying brushes so this brush has some water in it and these are all just kind of sitting there hanging in there together so i'm gonna take that brush and i'm gonna fan out those I'm gonna fan that brush out a little bit Okay, and I'm gonna come over here like so. I'm gonna come up here. And I, I, I want you to know, this is a, obviously this is a fruit. This is something out of nature. It's kind of like a tree or whatever. It's not supposed to be perfect. I know sometimes ladies will say, I'm really struggling with my OCD and this isn't perfect. 
Uh, I can't really speak to that. All, the, all, all, kind of, all I can say is I think the whole point is it's not supposed to be perfect. But, you know, that's something everybody has to make that decision for themselves. But my stuff is not perfect. I don't struggle to make it perfect. That's not what I'm about. That's not what I like. So I don't worry about that. Okay. Now, you can tell my paint is kind of lumpy and clumpy. And that may happen to you, okay? Water is your friend. Put some more water in there. For those of you that have joined me just recently, I'm doing a, um, a apple. You can make, we sell it as a yard art that you can put in the yard. We also sell it as a door hanger. Right now, I'm doing some of this dark green. I think it's number 10, dark green. It's dark green, I don't remember the number. But anyway, dark green. I had to put some water in here because mine's kind of clumpy. All right. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna just bring this out. I've got to lay that brush down a little bit, meaning I've got to put a little bit of pressure on that brush to get it the way I want it. Okay, so I'm gonna come in here like so, like so. I'm gonna do that. In there. Now this little guy is still really, really wet, but I'm going to try to shade him anyway. Ordinarily, I wouldn't do it if it's that wet, but he's kind of small, so I'm going to get a small shader. Let me find one. This is a number 12. And again, this is a newer brush. I don't have any older ones like this, so it's going to be a little more stiff than what I would like it to be. So what I would do is I would start down at the bottom, and again, you're gonna see my paint is making a mess because it's too wet. That's okay, I'll come back in the morning and fix it. I wanna show you guys what I'm doing. I'm having a hard time because the paint is wet, but that's all right, we'll make it work. Okay. Putting a lot of paint on there, trying to cover that up. So I'm going to use the script liner, okay? Hey Carolyn, how are you doing? Any ways to break into shader brush? Yeah, a couple of things you can do with the shader brush. Uh, when, sometimes when I get new brushes, if I'm impatient, which, hey, who isn't? I will uh, set, put some water, put them in a tall jar about like that, a little water and I'll put a little bit of uh, Murphy's oil soap in there, let them soak in there four or five, six hours, something like that. That'll kind of help soften them up. Also, I, I think I've showed y'all in front of the camera. I do this, to try to make those bristles fan out the way I want those bristles to fan out, which is, this is almost kind of counterintuitive, like you're tearing the brush up, but that's the only way sometimes you can get those, those bristles to come out. And sometimes I sit here and do this, so yeah. Water, soak them in some water and some Murphy's oil also. That will help. Okay. So I've got this. Uh, I'm still using the number, I think it's number 10, shading uh, or dark green. But what I'm doing is I'm coming in here now with my script liner. Okay. Oh, Lord. And I just messed up, didn't I? That's all right. It's good for y'all to see a mess up so you know how to deal with it. And I'm going to give him a little bit of smile. So I want him to have a little smile. And I might even put that on there, a little, a little uh, thing. I'm gonna come out here with this script liner and put a little more green out here, okay? I, basically, I'm outlining right now is what I'm doing. Now I'll come up in here. And I'll do that, and I'll do that. All right, so I'm gonna go back to shading red. Uh, in the fall, when we get to uh, things like, we'll probably do some turkeys. I always like to use reindeer brown, shading brown, shading red, okay? Shading red is the color that's on this apple right here. Hi, Sherry, how are you? Yep, Ashley says number 12, dark green. Very good. 
Okay, so this is the number 23 shading red, and I'm going to outline it on that shading brown. If you look at this, to me, this is a good color combination for turkeys at Thanksgiving, for reindeers uh, at Christmas, and for gingerbreads. Love those colors, okay? And that's probably all I'm gonna do to that part right there. I've got my stalk kind of the way I want it. I base coated it in reindeer brown, I shaded it in shading brown, and I outlined it in number, I think number 23 shading red, okay? Now I'm gonna put some black on here. To me, this thing needs a little bit of it. Sometimes I outline in black and sometimes I don't. How do I know the difference? It is simply your personal preference, what you like, what you think is gonna look good. Really, that's all it is. I'm gonna put some more black paint in here. Can y'all hear my dogs going crazy? I think somebody had the nerve to try to get out and I don't know, say something to us at our gate or something. So my dogs have that crazy. So I put some black paint in here. Y'all know I'm a fan of water. Put some water in here because this black paint is too thick. So of course the dogs decide to come in here and bark. What the, oh, somebody's getting furniture delivered in my backyard. Maybe that's what all the barking's about. It's not me though, y'all. Okay, so I put some water in there. I stir up my black paint till I get it the consistency that I want, okay? I'm using my script liner. So I, what am I doing right now? I'm outlining, that's what I'm doing, okay? What am I outlining? I'm gonna outline the apple and I'm gonna outline the green leaf, okay? That's what I'm doing right now. So I'm gonna come around here like so. What I'm gonna do is take that black paint up to the shading red outline. And then I'm gonna come out here. And I'm basically just following that green, dark green shading. That's all I did. Okay, and I'm fixing to turn it around so I can get to it a little bit better. And I'm gonna put a little bit of black wherever I put those uh, shading red strokes, or uh, yeah, shading red strokes. And I'm gonna outline this using my script liner. I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna do this, just go around my apple. Okay. And I'm gonna come on over here because the little guy, the eyes need some work over here. I don't know if y'all can see this, but it needs some work. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go around like this, do some work around here. Gotta do some work around here. Okay, I'm gonna go like that, come like this. Fixing up those eyes is what I'm trying to do. Make them look a little bit uh, more even. Now this is kind of hard, so a lot of times what I do is I let it dry, and in the morning I'll come back when this thing is freshly dry, and I'll do a little bit of doctoring just making it look a little better. Even in a, making it a little more even looking is what I mean by that. Okay. Now this guy is ready to be left alone with the exception of, let's putting some white on there. Okay, I'm gonna put some white highlights. So watch what I do when I put white on here. It's not, not anything magic that I'm doing per se, but it really does make a difference. Hey, Nancy, how are you doing? I'm so glad you could join us. I'm painting some uh, an apple and a ladybug. And again, I'm putting some water in here because this is uh, a little too gummy. We've been using this paint like crazy the last week or so, we've been painting a lot. It's the summertime, we tend to paint a lot in the summer because it dries fast. Okay. So I am stirring, stirring. Got it where I want it. Again, this is a script liner. I'm gonna put some paint on here. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna swirl that white in no particular way. I don't really have a pattern in mind. I'm just going wherever I think that white might look good, okay? I'm gonna go in here a little bit on the leaf, like so. I'm gonna come here on the stalk, come up like so. And then I'm going to turn this guy around a little bit 
and I'm going to put a little bit of white in here because I made a boo-boo earlier. I'm going to fix that right now. And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to put a, a little bit of white on his body. And in the morning when this is good and dry, I will probably come on and put some white in here. But right now it's so wet, there's nothing I can do with it. So I'm going to put this where you can see it. All right, this is my apple. Make sure you base coat red. Do not base coat in white. Base coat in red, just like I did, okay? Put a couple coats on there or one coat. Depends on how much you want. And I'm pretty good about laying paint down a lot at one time. So I do one coat. It might take you two coats. Either way. And then I base coated reindeer brown for my stalk, lime green on my leaf, and I base coated lime green on the uh, worm. And on the worm, I used the number 10 dark um, green and shaded number 10 dark green up here. I use shading brown, reindeer brown, shading brown, and then I outline in shading red. Super cute, y'all. But not perfect. I want you to see my work. For those of you that think this is per your work has to be perfect, this isn't perfect. It really isn't. But that's never been my, I don't know, that's really not important to me. So anyway, I'm gonna run get the ladybug. I'll be right back, y'all. It's not too shabby as far as being dry. Really, kind of, I think I can get away with putting some white on here. Excuse me. I'm going to come in here and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put some white on the uh, black dots. In no particular uh, fashion other than just put them where I think they're going to look good. Now on the antenna, I would probably come up here. I intend to just outline the whole thing. Come up here like that and then I probably would just do a couple of wisps in here like so come down here just to follow this a little bit and come here now as far as white I'm done but I'm not done with the black I've got to do a little bit more and then I am done what am I do I'm gonna come in here with this black uh, uh, paint on this script liner and I'm gonna make sure this line is good and crisp between the black and the red what I'm doing. Just laying some paint here to make it look good and crisp. Right here. Putting some black. Like so. Okay. Now, I'm not going to put any black out here, but what I am going to do is I'm cleaning out this brush. I'm going to use that shading red. And I'm going to come out here on the very edge and put a little bit more shading red. Just to kind of give it a lot of red on the very edge. And come up there. And then, I'm pretty much done. Basically, this has white, black, red, shading red. That's really all it is. Okay, that's what it is. So I think you guys can see. He's so cute and simple. I, earlier I asked you guys if y'all would comment in the section. And of course, for anybody who watches the live later, just wanted to know when we do lives, two questions. Number one, does it help you if we make a post earlier in the day saying, okay, we're going to do a live at such and such time? That's question number one. If that's helpful, let us know. If it's not helpful, let us know. Because we always like I don't want to assume. I like to ask a lot of questions so I can know what's going on with you guys, that is. And second thing is, is in the evening time, 7 to 8 o'clock, is that the best time? Or would afternoons around 2 to 3 o'clock work better? Uh, so if y'all could answer those two questions, that would be great. And um, my dogs have to act ridiculous. Ashley, I know, is probably going to be alive sometime this week. She's got two different ones. I don't know that she's going to do both of them, but she'll probably do one. And uh, ladybugs are ready to go at the shop, yardartrus.com, or you can just come on in. I had my son cut a lot of, hey, cut it out. Y'all, you know how it goes. Five dogs, yes. Uh, yes, post when you're doing live. Okay, good, good. I, I think that does help. And um, we're having trouble. The posts are, I'm not getting notifications. And even though everybody has looked at all my settings, if anybody has an idea, that can help me with Facebook on why I'm not getting 
things like when Ashley goes live, even though my notifications are turned on, if y'all have any ideas to help me out, that'd be great. I hope y'all have a good evening and paint your ladybugs using red first. We'll talk to you soon. Y'all have a good day.